I've got three quick and easy projects for you today that can be built in just one afternoon with just a couple of tools. I've also got a free plan for each of these and you can get those at the link below. We'll start with the toy car and the toy helicopter. Now, if you download the plan for these on the very last page, I've included a template for each one. So print this out, roughly cut it out with scissors, and then we'll glue it directly to the wood and use that as an outline to cut it out with our jigsaw. I'm just using some cheap multi-purpose spray adhesive. I'll press this down really good, and then I'm gonna wait quite a while to let it dry before I start cutting this out. We're using three quarter inch solid wood for these toys. It can be any kind of wood. I'm just using construction grade lumber from the home center. I've got this clamp to a piece of scrap two by six, and that's because we're gonna go ahead and drill all the holes right now. The window on the helicopter is a half an inch or whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna drill it out at a half inch. And then the wheels I bought for the helicopter are a quarter inch, but I need those to turn, so I'm gonna make it 5 sixteenths hole. And then the wheels for the car are quite a bit bigger. They're 3 eighths inch on the inside, so I need to make that hole a little bit bigger. And then to cut out the window for the car, I just need to make a couple of holes on each end so I can get the jigsaw in there to cut that out. We're drilling all the way through on all of these holes except for the tail rotor. We only want to go about halfway on that. The axle is going to be 3 eighths of an inch and I need it to spin so it needs to be slightly bigger than that. All I've got is a 3 eighths inch bit so I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole with this and then I'm just going to ream it out a little bit once I'm done. That's really good on this side. Now when I take this apart I need to flip it over and ream out these four holes for the cars on the other side. If you're using a twist bit like this one that's more flat on the top, a lot of times that can try to skate around a little bit before it bites and drills down, making it a little bit inaccurate. So if you want to get it right on that X, use something like a scratch all like this one, or you can use a nail or anything that has a point at the end. Put it right in the middle of that X and then push down. Now you've got a place where your drill bit will start. Because this does have curves and corners, I'm gonna use a scroll blade, which is a really narrow jigsaw blade that's for cutting tight corners. It's important you use the right blade for the job with the jigsaw or it's not gonna work the way you want it to. I'll link a couple of my videos down below that show you how to get the jigsaw to work the way it should. And we had a blowout. Once I got around to this other side, there was only just a little piece here that was holding it on. It started vibrating and broke off. So the biggest mistake was putting it too close to the end and then cutting all the way through to begin the cut. So what I think I need to do on these, they're better because they're further back, but I'm gonna drill a hole right next to it so I can start that way. And then I'm gonna cut off this half, leave about a two or three inch uh, gap here on the bottom and the top, and then cut out this half and then that way I can come back and just make a quick zip, zip, and hold it in place so it doesn't vibrate too bad. Another way to cut out these rotors that would be a lot quicker and a lot straighter is to use the miter saw. These are gonna be a little more square and clean, but if you've only got a jigsaw, it's perfectly fine to use that. I'm gonna use the random orbit sander turned upside down like this and use it as sort of a stationary sander and sand all of the pieces. Now there are some areas like in the window of the car that are gonna to have to be done by hand. You could also sand these completely by hand. The helicopter template has this little line that gives you the basic position of where you need to drill for the rotor axle. So I'll line up the bit with that mark and I'll try to get right in the middle of the thickness of the wood and we'll drill down about half an inch. With the jigsaw, a trick to getting a better surface after you cut is to keep it really smooth and continuous. Don't start and stop, don't jerk it, just a smooth transition all the way across there. And I really don't need a lot of sanding on this side. And a method for sanding this with more control is just to put your sandpaper down on the workbench and then sand it this way. It'll take a lot longer if you've got a lot to sand, but you can really get a nicer finish around the edges and the shape of those edges. It'll also help you prevent breaking thinner pieces like the roof of this car. Making the axles are pretty simple. We just put it through the rotor down into the hole we just drilled, and then we're gonna mark this pretty close flush with that rotor, but we wanna give ourselves just a little bit of room. And then you can cut the dowel with a jigsaw or miter saw. I'm gonna use a handsaw. saw. 
And then as a cap, we'll use this 3 8 dowel and cut a really small piece off, glue it to the top there, and then we'll sand that to make it a little more rounded. I'll link down below to where I got the wheels for both this and the car in case those are the ones you want to get. So I've got a long piece of dowel here and so that I don't have to push one of the wheels all the way down, I'm going to put this one on backwards, so the outside first, and slide it over. Now I want mine to be flush with that inside part like that, but you could also push it through a little bit and give it more of a look like that. And then slide this wheel over until it's in position. All right, I've got that about where I want it. And then since this is inside here, I'm going to have to guess. I'm going to have to mark it and then cut a little further there. You want it a little bit loose, obviously, so that it can spin and roll like that. So now that I've dry fit that, I can take this apart and use that dowel to mark the other dowel. And then I will glue just one end on each of these. And the car, of course, only has the axles, and we'll use 3 8 dowel for that. Before I put them all together and do the final assembly, I'm gonna take this opportunity to put on some Danish oil, which is perfect for projects like this, and it's easy to apply. I completely saturate all the pieces with Danish oil and a paintbrush, and then give it about 30 minutes, and if any of the pieces need some more, if there's any dry spots, then I'll apply more, and then about 30 minutes later, we'll wipe off any excess, and then let it dry for about eight hours before it can be handled. Make sure you wear a respirator when you're using this because it's a little bit spicy. These toys are really easy to make. You can make several of them in just an afternoon and you can use whatever wood you want. You can paint them, you can stain them, and they make a great gift. The step stool is probably the easiest project in this video. It just consists of four pieces, which I've already got cut here. And the legs have got this half circle cut out of them with the jigsaw, and then they taper up towards the top and we need to cut that. Our taper goes from the bottom corner to about an inch in on the top. So we just need to measure an inch on each side of each leg here. And then we'll use a straight edge to connect those two points. Now that we've got our angle here, we could either cut this out with a jigsaw or a circular saw, but I'm gonna use the miter saw and just line it up with this angle and cut it out that way. This side's marked over here, but I don't wanna move the miter saw, so what I'm gonna do is just flip this over line it up with this back corner and cut it that way. So there's the taper on our leg. We want our half circle to be about six inches wide and three inches high. So that's an inch and a half from each side. And these are just general guidelines. You don't have to strictly adhere to this. It really depends on what you find to trace your half circle with. So I'm gonna use a paint can. I'll line it up on the marks as evenly as I can. And then trace our half circle. To attach this cross piece to each leg, I'm gonna measure halfway on each one I want that mark visible right here because that's where we're gonna line up the support piece. And then I'll mark halfway the thickness of this support piece. So now I can hold those marks together and I know where it needs to be positioned. I wanna put two screws through the outside of the leg into the support. So what I'll do is hold this up there on the outside of the leg and make sure that that is straight. And then I'll just lightly outline this 
and now I know where I need to put the screws. When I drive the screws into this, I'm gonna do an extra step that you don't have to do. You can just drive the screws in and leave it like that with the screws showing, that's not a big deal. But what I'm gonna do is take some of the 3 8 dowel from our toy car build and a 3 8 Forstner bit, and I'm gonna drill a countersink hole about a half inch deep, and once I drive the screw in there, I'll put the 3 8 dowel in and plug that hole so that once it's sanded flat and flush, it'll look a little bit nicer. If you only have two hands like I do, it really helps to use a clamp in this situation. So I'm gonna put some glue on the edge of the support. This really doesn't add too much more strength, but it will help keep the stool from racking. Now that that's in place, we wanna make sure it's straight up and down, and we'll do that by measuring on each side to make sure those distances are the same. We wanna make sure this support does not rise above the legs so that the top is not bowed. I've got the clamp off to drive in these upper screws and I just wanna check and make sure it sits flat and it doesn't rock. And now we can drive these upper screws in. Before we put that top on, I wanna talk about this support piece and the way that I've attached it and wood movement. So the grain on this piece is running this way, so it's gonna expand and contract this way, up and down, and it's also gonna get a little thicker and a little narrower. Now the legs, the grain is running up and down, so these are gonna expand side to side. Now we call that a cross grain joint. Now generally, we don't wanna lock a piece like this in across its grain, so I've glued all the way across the grain on each end, and that doesn't really allow it to stretch and grow up and down like it should. Now there's a couple reasons I'm okay with this. One of them is because it's a really narrow piece of wood. It's only about three and a half inches. Wider boards will expand and contract a lot more than more narrow boards. The second thing is, if you look at this support piece, the grain is pretty straight, which means this is a very close to a quarter sawn piece of wood. It's not a big deal if you don't know what that is right now. All it means is that it's not going to expand up and down as much as a piece of wood that's flat sawn. So not only is this a pretty narrow piece of wood that's not gonna move a lot anyway, but it's also turned so that the radial movement is on the wider part, and that's about half as much as the tangential, which is on the thickness of this wood. So all that to say, I'm not worried about locking it in this way. We should be safe. And even if it does break the glue, we've got the screws to keep it in place. The top is quite a bit wider, so it actually may move. So we don't wanna lock it down in each corner. So what I'm gonna do is glue it down right across the support, and then we'll drive two screws on each end on either side of the support spaced about an inch apart. I'm gonna start by getting this all lined up, and then I'll drill pilot holes and drive the screws. That way, when we take it off, we can put some glue and then drive the screws through just a little bit, and then we'll find the holes and be able to set that right back where we had it. At this point, if you wanted to, you could stop right here and be done with this stool. But I'm gonna go a little bit further and plug these holes with 3 8 inch dowel and then give the whole thing a good sanding and put some finish on. What makes this really easy is to add the glue and then put the dowel in there and cut it off with a flush trim saw. These only cost 10 to $15 at the home center. After that, I'll sand everything down, making sure to break the edges and round them over. And then you can sand the curves in a bunch of different ways. You can just do it by hand. You can try to use your random orbit sander, but be really careful if you use that. I'm gonna use this drum sanding attachment for my drill, which makes this an easy job and then hand sand to break the edges of the curve. When you move the stool around, you can actually tear the fibers away from the edges. So to prevent that, we're gonna bevel each edge on each leg. This stool's gonna get a lot of wear and tear, so I'm gonna put a really durable film finish on it. I'm using polycrylic from Minwax. Now you could also paint this, but I would suggest if it's gonna be used, Use a paint that's got a polyurethane in it. There's urethane type paints out there. Now, if it's just gonna be decorative, you can do whatever you want with it.
The last project is a wooden tote. It's made up of five pieces of wood and then a one inch dowel. And we're gonna start by working on the sides and the end pieces. The sides get a little dip cut out with the jigsaw and then the end pieces have some angles and a hole drilled for the dowel. You certainly don't have to cut out the dip in the side pieces, but I think it looks a little better and it also helps you get the stuff inside of the tote a little easier. So I'm using the quarter inch dowel from the toy project earlier in this video, and then you just need two stationary objects that will hold the ends of the dowel so that you can bend it about like this. You're looking for even spacing here on the sides and then a gentle curve that's even all the way across, and then we'll just trace it with a pencil. So if you like the way that looks, go ahead and cut it out with the jigsaw, we'll sand it up a little bit, and then we'll use this to trace onto the other one. On these end pieces following the plan, that cutout part begins 10 and a quarter inches up from the bottom. So we'll mark that. And then we'll mark the midpoint on the width of this board at seven and a quarter inches. So we need to mark it right at three and five eighths. And then the width of the very top is gonna be two inches. So we just need to measure an inch each way from this middle mark. All right, so the cutout will go from this point to this point. We want the center of this hole to be about one and a half inches down from the top. And what I'll do is extend this mark I already made for the middle of the thickness. And that way with those two meet, that's where I want to start the hole. I'm assembling this the same way that I did the stool. I'll start with a 3 8 inch Forster bit and drill a hole that will plug with dowel later on. And I'm attaching the sides to the bottom with glue and screws. So these end pieces, the grain is running up and down. That means it's gonna expand most side to side. These sides are expanding up and down, and then the bottom is expanding side to side. So what we'll do is just attach the end piece to the bottom and not glue it to the sides. That way the end and the bottom can expand and contract together and the sides will also be floating to where they can move. Once we attach this piece to the bottom, then the dowel handle will make it more secure up top as well. One other thing you could do if you feel like these are too flimsy and not secure enough, is just take the same material that you used for the bottom piece, gonna be exactly the same width, and cut about an inch off of that and use that as a support right across the top there or maybe even a little further down. If you glue that in, that's in the same orientation as the bottom piece, so those two will move together. And it's also floating with the two side pieces as they move, it's letting them go up and down. Now, one last thing before I put these end pieces on is I want the end pieces to sit lower than the actual body of the tote. So what I'm gonna do is put this on some 3 16 plywood. This is just really cheap plywood. If you don't have any scrap to use as a spacer like this, just take the quarter inch dowel from the previous helicopter project, cut a couple pieces and put them on each end to lift it up about a quarter of an inch. Now that will be about the same as this. You'll just have to make sure that it doesn't roll back and forth. Now that we have these supports in place, we can finally glue on the end pieces. So I've got it spaced here like we talked about a while ago. So the easiest way to do this is to add the glue, put both end pieces into place, and then use a long clamp that's long enough to clamp them both in place on each side. If you don't have a clamp this long, another way to do it is to alternate wood glue and CA glue. 
That way, when you hold it up here, after a couple minutes, it will be dry, and then you can add the screws. Before I glue these permanently, I've got it dry fit here so that I can measure for the dowel. I think this actually turned out really cool. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of different uses for this. So at this point, you could put finish on this just like we did the step stool or the toys with Danish oil or a spray polyurethane or a wipe on polyurethane. It really depends on how much use it's gonna get. If you've never built anything before, these projects are a great place to start. So go down to that link below, get the free plans, and then watch one of these two videos or any of the other videos on the channel, and I'll see you over there.